Hey, my friends, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Thanksgiving, it has a meaning. And I'm not talking about the meaning that America ascribed to Thanksgiving, but I wanna share with you the meaning that your Thanksgiving can have from God. So let's stay tuned and talk about it. Once to ponder, no need to wonder. Hello, my friends, I'm Tyrone Holcomb, and I'm the host who loves to bring you close. And I'm talking about bringing you closer and closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. The way that I'm able to do that is through this podcast that I call Points to Ponder. You know, every week I remind you, this is your points to ponder. So thanks for joining in to hear a word from the Lord. I'm so excited to be back with you again. And the reason why I'm excited is because it's November. In November, it's the month for Thanksgiving. So I'm believing that the Holy Spirit will allow me to spend the entire month bringing to you a series that I want to share. And the title of this series is This Thanksgiving. And the subtitle that I want to share with you is The Meal Has Meaning. (laughs) So I want you to tune in with me every week because there are eight particular points about the Passover meal that I believe we can ascribe to our Thanksgiving meal. And let me share with you before I go into all of that, let me share with you uh, the word of the Lord coming out of Exodus chapter 12. And I'm I'm gonna warn you, it's gonna be a rather lengthy reading. I don't normally read this many scriptures for our opening text, but I believe it's gonna all be important in the long run. And it's gonna be where we derive our eight points that I'm gonna share throughout the month of November. So let me share Exodus chapter 12, starting with verse one, and I'll read through verse 11. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with the bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. I warned you. That was a whole lot of scriptures. But my friends, I'm glad that you allowed me to read that entire text to you because that was an account of the Lord's Passover. Now, what is the Lord's Passover? Let me explain that first and foremost and tie it into what we consider and call today Thanksgiving. The Lord's Passover was initiated when God's people that is Israel, found themselves 
in Egyptian slavery. And God had finally came to deliver them from their bondage. And God told his prophet and their leader, Moses, he told him to tell the people to prepare a meal that this meal would be considered Passover. And where did they get the term Passover? Well, God, he brought 10 plagues up on the Egyptians. And the reason why he brought these 10 plagues is because the Egyptian ruler who was called the Pharaoh, he refused to let God's people go. And so God decided, well, he's going to flex his muscle and show the Pharaoh in the nation of Israel really who's boss. And so God, he, he brought nine plagues up on Egypt. And now the 10th plague was going to be the final blow. And this plague was going to uh, really cause the Pharaoh to yield to God's will. And this plague was God was going to send a death angel over the whole nation of Israel and to kill their firstborn child. And God told Moses in order to protect his people because they also resided at that time in Egypt, God told Moses to tell the people to prepare a lamb for a meal that they would eat and take the blood of the lamb and put it on their doorposts. And when the death angel would come throughout the nation of Egypt. And whenever he would see a house with the blood on the doorpost, that angel would pass over that house and those children would be spared. You see, that's where they got the term Passover because the death angel would pass over all of those who were protected by God. And so God gave them this meal. And it's interesting that of all things that God chose to use for them to celebrate their release, it was a meal. God chose them uh, a meal to prepare. And subsequently, after God delivered Israel from Egyptian bondage every year, they were to celebrate Passover meal. And what they, what they would do is remember God's deliverance. So that's the backdrop of the Passover meal and how God instructed them to prepare the meal. I believe that there are eight particular points that we can utilize today when we have our Thanksgiving meal. Now, our Thanksgiving meal is a time when our nation comes together and we are thankful for uh, having the country that we have. And it's a whole lot of backdrop in that, that I don't even want to open up that can. But what I do want to focus on is the meal. God, he wants you, my friends, to enjoy your Thanksgiving meal. That's why the title of this series is This Thanksgiving, because every Thanksgiving should be a time that we record in our minds about how God has been good to us. And that's why the subtitle is The Meal Has Meaning. Our Thanksgiving meal should have meaning for us. Now, tonight, I'm only going to share the first two points that I want to pull from our text so that we can appreciate our Thanksgiving meal. And as we go on through the month, each message, I'll just share two additional points. Now, for the first point I want to talk about is how God will bless us in our mess. When we read the text back in Exodus chapter 12, the first thing that we read is the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. Egypt, I just told you, it was a place where they were enslaved. God had a promised land for his people, and this place was called Canaan, but they were not in Canaan. And so 
They were not in the place of promise, but rather a place that was filled with problems. And God wants you to know that you may be facing problems right now in your life, but he can bless you in the midst of your mess. And too often, people, they don't want to partake of thanksgiving because they feel that times are tough. Money may be tight. Someone in your family who you love may have passed on or they may not be where you are right now. Y'all may be separated. And whatever the case may be, God knows that times are tough. But even in tough times, God wants to bless us. God wants to prepare a table for us. That's what we read over in Psalms 23 where David said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil in my cup. It truly runs over. My friends, what God wants you to really appreciate right now, even if you're going through some hard times, is know that you're not alone, that God is with you, even in your hard times. This Thanksgiving, don't have uh, a pity party. This Thanksgiving, don't forego the celebration because of all the tough things that you may be facing. No, that would not make God's heart please. God wants you to know that he can still bless you in the midst of your mess. I know right now, currently, Everything is not going according to my plans. Everything is, is not hunkadory, as we would say in Texas, but that's okay because I know that God's will is still being performed in my life. And I want to just take the time to give God praise for that. And so I want to encourage you, my friends, as November is right up on us, as the season of Thanksgiving is uh approaching us. I want you to get encouraged right now and know that God, he can still bless you. If you're watching this program, God has already blessed you because you have sight, because you have your hearing, because you have understanding. And you may not have everybody that you want with you right now, but God, he'll, he'll show you that there are still people that you can have thanksgiving with. The Bible tells us in Exodus 12 that God spoke to Moses and his brother Aaron. You see, Moses was not in Egypt by himself. He had his family member in Egypt with him. And God wants you to know that you have somebody. You have somebody there with you. And even if it's not a family member, it could be a friend or a neighbor. That's what God told them to do is to find a neighbor and to prepare a meal with them. And so be thankful that you have somebody in your life. I don't care if all you have is a can of beans and a pack of hot dogs. And when I say I don't care, I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm really saying it doesn't matter because it's not about what you're eating but rather that you are partaking of some kind of meal. Just take the time out, my friends, and give God thanks. And that's actually the second part of this teaching. The second point I want to make is to take the time out. We see in Exodus 12, the second verse this month is to be for you the first month of the first month of your year. And so you see God, he's a, a God of details. And God said, make sure to Israel in the first part of the year, you make this uh, time, a time where you have this Passover. Now for our culture and Western culture in North America, we celebrate Thanksgiving at the end of the year and particularly in the 11th month. However, it doesn't matter that we're celebrating it at the end of the year or that we celebrate it like Israel at the beginning of the year. The point really 
is that we take the time out to give God praise, to thank God. That's really what it's all about. You know, in the Bible, there was a man by the name of Elijah. And Elijah, the Bible says that it did not rain for three years at a particular time of his life. But God fed Elijah by a brook and he fed Elijah with ravens or, or rather he caused ravens to feed Elijah. Now the miracle in that is ravens, they're dirty birds. You know, ravens, they're not known to feed anyone. But what God was showing Elijah and subsequently what he's showing us is God is going to provide for us in extraordinary ways and uncommon means. God is going to take care of us. And even if it has to get down and dirty, don't you worry about it because God is going to meet your need, my friend. And that's what he did for Elijah. He fed him at the brook uh, for a particular time. And then after a particular season, the brook dried up. And God told Elisha to now go into a small town and that a widow woman would feed Elijah at that town. And Elijah, he obeyed God. And when he got to that town, the first person he encountered was that widow woman. And that widow woman, she spoke to Elijah and, and said to him that she would give him, give him some water. But Elijah then asked for a meal. And that widow woman said, wait a minute, I don't have enough to feed you. She says, I only have just enough to feed me and my son. And then we're going to die. This woman was preparing her last meal. But Elisha said, you go ahead and do what you said you were going to do. Prepare that meal for you and your son. He says, but give to me first. And that woman, she obeyed the man of God and her meal was sustained for days, weeks, and even months. Why do I bring that up? God is going to stretch your resources, my friend. If you would just recognize that not only will God bless you, but God want you to take this time out to recognize and give him praise for all that he has done all year long. That's what this Thanksgiving is for. It's for us to just take the time out and give God praise. And God, he will stretch that can of beans and that pack of hot dogs. You watch and see. God is going to cause men to pour into your bosom and to bless you in a tremendous way. All he's asking for you and for me is that we would take this time out to give him praise. I always say there's nothing wrong with God's miracles. The issue is with our memory. What do I mean by that? Well, just take the time out this Thanksgiving. And rather than talk about the world's de deliver, uh, developments, talk about God's deliverance. See, oftentimes when we get together, for Thanksgiving, we'll talk about the developments in politics. And, oh, you got to watch out this Thanksgiving because that has been a hot topic in our society in terms of the presidential uh, race and, 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 and the different parties and all of that. Don't allow the world's developments to spoil your Thanksgiving. No, rather than taking time out and talking about the world's developments or dilemmas, Talk about God's deliverance. Don't give the devil this time. No, not this year. Take this time out and recall how God has taken care of you from January, February. He got you through March, April. He's brought you through May and June and July. And it was God's goodness that allowed you to see August and September, October, and look at it. We're now in November. Give God praise. That's what Psalms 150 tells us to do. The psalmist said that we ought to praise God with the harp. Praise God with the various instruments. 
But then the psalmist went on to say, we ought to break out and dance before the Lord and show him praise. But now, if you can't praise God with an instrument and if you can't get up and give God a dance, the psalmist did not leave any rock unturned. He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. First of all, he didn't say let everyone, but let everything. So that means the plant life, the tree life, they got to praise the Lord. If it has breath, he said, let it praise the Lord. But then you and I, he didn't say let everyone who can sing. Oh, no, because that would have left me out. <laughs> I certainly can't sing. But he says, Tyrone, if you got breath in your body and because of God's goodness, I do. And because of God's goodness, you do. He says, then let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So I'm here to tell you as I close out this message, whatever you do this Thanksgiving, don't hold your breath. No, don't hold your breath on God. If you got breath in your body, God gave you that breath so you can give him praise. My friends, know that the meal has meaning. The first meaning is that God, he will bless us even during troublesome times. The second meaning is we need to take the time out every year and give God praise. And if you will do that, then you will see God is going to make things work together for your good. I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you. I'm praying that this Thanksgiving, you're going to take the time out and remember how good God has been. And you're going to be able to enjoy this Thanksgiving with your family, with your friends. Share this message with someone, my friends. They need to get excited about this Thanksgiving. And then I'm asking that you would subscribe to this channel so that you can hear a message or at least hear this series for the remainder of the month. And there's a number on your screen and I'm inviting you to call that number if you would like counsel or if you would like to call in for prayer. I'm here and prepared to do both. Well, until next week, I'm praying that you remain safe and that no matter whatever it is you're facing, you can face every opposition and obstacle with this confidence. God is real. God bless you. We love you.